Hi guys, it's Dave with you at Special Squeeze Samples. Uh, we're doing a video today in Mr. Joe Garrett, Temple One Studio. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to go over his track, um, Butter Sweet, uh, the remix that he done for us for Driftman. Uh, we're going to break down all the channels, all the grouping, mixing, synths, basically go over the full project for you to give you an idea of how he goes about producing his tracks. I don't think he's done anything like this before, so it'll be quite insightful. Yep, a lot of people are asking about this one, so... So it's definitely the right one to do. <laughs> Absolutely. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is just give you a little preview of the track so you can kind of remember what it sounds like and get an idea of the kind of flow it. So you want to play it, Joe? Yep. Can I get an idea there? Uh, what BPM is that one? 137? It's 138. 138, right? Yes. Uh, so, one of the first things that we're going to do is we're just going to go over each one of the channels, like what the mixing that's been applied in each track, uh, and uh, samples and synthesis on each track. So, the very first one is the kick, which is arguably the most important. Okay, so I'll just show you kick off the quite a knocky kick. Um, it's obviously a low pass. Feels like that. Uh, just quickly show the processing. Uh, this is something I use a lot, the quadrophiles, so it just gives it that sort of, uh, it's like a dynamic EQ, so it gives it a lot more punch. So that's like a distortion unit in QBase? Yeah, I think without it. I don't know if you can probably hear the difference, but. Um, you can, yeah. Just thickens it up a bit. Uh, envelope shaper. Really important for me as well, when a lot of people say the kicks aren't cutting through. Uh, this really helps uh, tighten things up, so uh, just cut the release a little bit just to make it a bit more uh, sharper and snappier. Okay, that's again, it's a Cubase plugin. Yeah, this one is, but you can use other stuff. I know a lot of people use the SPL with Transient Designer. Okay. Uh, just a couple of filters for filter work. So, you know, low pass, high pass stuff. That's just a five pot or sampler. Yeah, really useful, I use that a lot. Uh, just a simple, simple filter. And you're actually automating that in the build, uh, the filter, you're opening it up with on the intro. Yeah, so you've got a lot of automation, like the answer, as you can see, like... Um, that'll be that one. Yeah, so you can see it there, coming in. So yeah, just you know, pretty basic stuff for that. How does that affect if you're, you know, mixing the tracks? Is that, that's not really DJ friendly? Have you got a kick uh, column? Yeah, it can be, but I, just, I think it just makes it a bit more, a um, bit different. Okay. Um, Watch yeah, the right than just on the kick. Yeah. Oh, um, volume wise, as well, if you look, I, you know, around minus eight dB. Um, a lot of people, it's quite a sort of confusing thing sometimes, and people overthink it with uh, the sort of gain structure, but it doesn't really matter. But I think it's good practice if you keep your levels low, um, and and try not to clip and. Um, yeah, it's, it's good for the master. So are your drums are all going into AR bus? How are you? Yes, uh, the kick's not. The kick's just going straight out to uh, like a master bus, which is before it goes to the, the stereo out. So do you always have the kick standalone, basically? Yes, yeah, always. Yeah, always. Yeah. And then the drums, as you can see, they'll be going to the drum bus. So ah, right, okay. And this percussion. Just not much on this, just a little EQ, Cubase EQ and stuff like this. Have a loop. Just loops that suit each other. Um, yeah, where are the loops from? Uh, these ones, I can't remember. It's Vengeance, I think a couple of these are. Um, and this one. It's Vengeance uh, as well. Vengeance, uh, Vengeance is Central Club. And uh, some one. other ones that I've just picked up. Um, uh, and above and beyond. But which was one that you sampled yourself? Yeah, uh, I sort of collect them over the years and you sort of um, chop them up and you can do other stuff. But again, most of the loops are just... just Very minimal processing. Yeah, it's quadruplus and like, in. what's that on? That's on uh, my mid, mid sort of perk. Just more for the drive. Yeah, yeah. Uh, again, yeah. crash. So again, Crash have uh, send new send effects, bit of uh, reverb and delay. Do you want to just talk about what the, the differences between the inserts and the sends and how you use it? 
Yeah, I think uh, the sends are more for stuff like delay and reverb, so you can just use, you know, a couple of reverbs or delays and you can use them throughout the track rather than um, putting them as inserts where it's, say, CPU and it keeps things a bit more cohesive. Okay, and just well, like uh, one of the Yeah, just all the stuff like, I think it was just a... Um, Well, it should have been reverse right. This is an old project, so it might be uh that was a reverse ride. I don't know why it's not doing that. Oh, okay. But anyway, like I say, um apart from the kick, the drum folder, uh, all the other drums are going to a drum bus where I have again some more filter work in it. Um the C six um multiband compressor from Waves which okay. just sparkles things up and just a limiter to um, so you've got a limit on the drum bus yeah just to um, uh, keep things uh, uh, from uh, going over ok and then we're on to the bass group yeah so, so your basic bass. how many bases is it on total one, two, three, four, about five, possibly six, if you include like sort of, you know. Right, okay, so the main base. Uh, okay, so we do the mid base first. Yep. So that filters in. Again, quadrifies on that. Assumption. Yep. Filter and um, the all exciter Apex rule. Then what are you using? Just an exciter. That's yeah. It's just like a yeah exciter sort of saturator. Gives it a little bit more um, analog sort of sparkle. Um, just really brings things out a bit more. Really useful. Very mid range EQ. So that is the mid bass one. Yep. And then you've got a second mid bass. Another one. It's a bit more of an aggressive one. And what presets are you using for this? So, and what synths? Yeah, so this is a silence, the previous one was a silence. That was just a patch that you made? Uh, <coughs> so yeah, the, yeah. So the first mid bass is a patch? Oh, um, hold on. Show us. Yeah, this one was just uh, a preset that I made. Second one was um, a lead sound from, I think that... Uh, Wait, that's one of the old No, that was from Adam Van Baker's Bank, I think. Adam Van Baker's Bank, yeah. Um, this this one, saw bass. So this is more uh, prominent again, quite fast again. Uh, C1 compressor. What kind of, so, what kind of settings or something are you using in the compressor? Um, I'm just using a uh, sort of a mid range sort of ratio, uh, middle attack, quite fast release. And um and the delay. Delay uh, is H delay. Again that's the same effect. Yep, it's not the same. Uh Transex multi stereo from waves as well, really good plug in as well. Again, it's like another dynamic EQ, works well, so it gives it a bit more bite and thickness. Uh other sound. It's more like a sort of acidic, sort of just additive. Again, nothing on that, it's just a bit of EQ. So, no, it can't be quite a hard boost. Okay, I use sometimes Cubase EQs a lot, a lot, I know a lot of people don't use them, but yeah, they're quite, they're quite useful. The next one is Phase Bass. Which is from a very old son. Yeah, it's oh, yeah. really handy though for that, that sort of phase sort of sound. Which is pissed off to a knob, I'm sure. Yeah, there's a lot of processing in this one, so again, quite a first. Always at the start. <laughs> yep, yeah. feel the work, multi band side chain for that. Such as Avengers, yeah. Uh, again, trying to take multi stereo again. C4 multi band processor, another quadrifuzz. Low cut, some delay. Um, and your computer went a little bit slow. Yeah, it'd be right. Uh, okay. 
Okay. Uh, obviously, uh, what's this one? Oh, yeah, another sort of squelchy sort of sound from uh, just a thing of silence. Is that one of your parties? No, this is from. Uh, I think it's just from the standard. Standard silent thing. Again, just a bit of EQ, got it buffed to synth. And then I think the main bass, which is a sub bass. That's a question. Again, a lot of it. silence. Yep. Yeah. Um, this bass, I think, will get ahead and Van Baker sounds so, um, processing. None on that, but this is what I'm going to come to now is that all the basses are going to another bus. With the bass bus, which is here, which is as you can see, on the lot on that. Patient's mighty band. Right. C6 yeah. again, mighty band. Press uh, uh, a bit of EQ just to knock off a real low end. Uh, sausage hand. Do you use that a lot in the. Uh, uh, sometimes, sometimes, yeah. Depends. Yeah, it's simple. Uh, filter, simple. Uh, so, multi tap delay. Which is a great plugin by. It's Echo Boy, sound plays. Yes, it is. It's really good. Okay, so yeah, so that's the bass, and obviously all together it's. So can you just talk about like how you would? Uh, is your bass always put in a bass bus, and then you process it all together? It's like. Yeah, I'll always have a bass bus, and just I'll give that an overall. Um, Processing treatment, I guess. Right, okay. So now we're on to the synths. Yep. So synths. Um, that was quite a lot going on here. Yeah, a bit of audio. This is just like a sort of above and beyond sort of type acid that uh, I sampled from a virus. Um, and there's a process on that? Uh, not sure. No, no just cut. Reverb and low carb, but it's going to the synth bus, so it's probably a little bit of yeah, process. Okay. Uh, vocal top, which is from the original, I know, but which I reversed. I uh, got a camel fat on that just for a little bit of side chain. And obviously, you're always cutting low the low carb. End. Yeah, yeah, uh, yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, which is a good uh, tap for anyone. Yeah, if you, if you feel, I mean. Sometimes if you low cut too much, it can sound a bit flat, but um, yeah, generally if it's not bassy, then you're fine. Uh, another sound, which was like a, some sort of acid sound. Again, camel fat, just to such a low cut. Um, not sure where I got that from. Probably some audio that I cut up and it just put it in key and it kind of worked. Okay. Um, the Swift, what's this? Oh, okay, so this is just more like effects I've been there. Uh, Siren Chop. Okay, just done again another little vocal thing. Um, side chain, a limiter, and some EQ. And we've got gate synths. Oh, just one of the Okay, so again, this uh, lots of low cut and just uh, high boost as well. C1 compressor, L2 to capture any of the harmonic frequencies. Um, yeah, that's, that's, that's going on in the synth bus as well. Yeah, it's going to synth bus, so I've got Arts Acoustic Reverb on that. I've actually side-chained this reverb. So does, I mean, have like the same reverb, but one side-chained and one's not, so I can sort of just switch them up. So if I just want the large reverb, I can have that. It's the same reverb, but the difference is this one's side-chained. So you're side-chaining the reverb on the gated sound? Uh, yeah, well, the, if I go down to the effects here, you'll see I've stuck a camel fat a camel on it. Fat on it. Yeah. So that's a good tip as well, you know, on your send effects, it's good to process your your send effects. You can get some really cool effects. And the gate's just a silent 
Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's the solo G string. I think a lot of people have heard that one. Yeah, that's the standard preset. Uh, um, up next is this one. Let's look. Okay. Yep, so this is the massive. Uh, what chance there? Pluck Candy DK, which I think is um, one of my sound sets. One freshly squeezed. Um, <laughs> it's definitely one of your plucks, huh? It is. I think this is one of the original plucks I did, which I yeah, then put into one of the packs. Um, Okay, and uh, the processing on that? Yeah, there's quite a lot on this one. Um, is the Waves Renaissance Compressor. <coughs> again, the Transex Multi. Quadrifuzz again. Apex Vintage Exciter. Um, some more EQ, the REQ from, um, from Waves. Waves, yeah. Um, a little bit of low end. Um, around 100 hertz, um, just give it that uh, that sort of warmth. I think it can add if your your plucks sound a bit thin and you want more weight to them. You just boost around them and it sort of just gives them a, makes them feel a bit more heavy. Okay. Uh, again, fat feel simple on and um, yes, yeah, so I've actually got a side change. Yeah. So, so the leaf side change, the leaf plot. Uh, yeah. I need a little bit of that, so it just gives it a bit of, a bit of balance. But you've got a, a saw as well that comes in for weight? I have. Um, laser. Okay. We've got the pad. This is my usual pad. Ah, uh, typical. It's in general pad as well. Yeah. 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 This is a tweaked sort of patch. Again, C6 multi band compressor on this. Reverb, a little bit of EQ, again going to like the pad bus, which I don't think is much on there. Um, piano. Which was that right? Yeah, it was like sample tank on the Nexus, either one. Because the sample tank's like, it's really underlooked as well. Yeah, it is. Great, That's... great synth sample tank. If you, um, Want to look at it, and then you've what? Uh, the sub one, the main sort of intro plucks again from the massive, then the massive plucks. Yep, pretty really cool sound. Process wise, just a compressor, just to give us some you know, bite. Reverb, EQ, nothing special. Again, go to the synth bus, sort up. Which is quite brunching as well. Silence. Yeah. Yeah, so you get that sort of cool. Um, yeah. And, and the song. <laughs> this, um, I don't think I used, I think it was going to be in the breakdown, but. Um, no, I moved it to, oh yeah, sorry, there's a sub there. Uh, massive for that as well, that's Super Sub, which is in the um, Massive Essential collection. Yep, that's uh, so so Literally nothing on that. Uh, okay, so just to play the breakdown. I'm still really happy with those chords. They're very nice chords. This pad here, I rendered from uh, Reason. I used to use Reason years ago, and um, there's some cool pads in there, so sometimes I like to so that's render, actually render from stuff from the form? Reason 4. No, the 4 son. No, no, it's Maelstrom. Maelstrom. That's like a candy bar. Yep, yep, totally. But live with this, you know, sort of. What mixing did you have in that reason, Pat? Not much. Nothing. Have a EQ. Again, I think it's important to get the sound right at the start. Um, I mean, ah, that's ultimately. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah. Um, and then obviously when the synths kick in here. 
This back in saw here, so there's loads of, uh, this is a massive um, lead saw echo from um, the uh, Massive Central Collection. Again, a lot of, you know, compression, quadrifile skin, envelope shaping. And what have you got? What's uh, you've got the Transex on yeah. it as well? Yeah. Uh, envelope shaper. Yeah, you've got. <laughs> yeah, I just think it brings it out a bit more. And you, you've so basically there's two layers ultimately that lead playing, yeah. the, playing the same melody. That's right. Right. Um, and is that common for you to just have the two layers? No, usually I'd probably have more, but I think for sort of plucky stuff like that. Like I said, again, it sounds good. You shouldn't know. really need too many people laying yeah. up too much as well. Don't forget, there's a, there's a background synth as well, chirping away. That's what I kind of like. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a solo. So yeah, and that's pretty much like the breakdown and how the synths work. You know, it's nothing overly complex. And then the effects. And then the effects, yeah, just you know, just the start, usual like, standard sweeps. Literally, just probably basic EQ and cuts. There's no like secrets. Are they? They're going to a bus as well. They are, but I don't think I'd put anything on the bus. No, no. literally, just probably just a, a master volume. Um, and and that was it. Um. Uh, what? One thing to point out as well um, is on the I have everything pretty much rooted to the a master bus as well. Okay. Most stuff, not everything, um, and I have it's a little tip a trick. The master output volume, on the stereo. Oh, sorry. Well, on the master bus, uh, just slightly going up and down, just to give it a uh, bit more bounce. That's a really good technique for that's an illusion <laughs> as well. Yeah, it's really yeah. useful. You don't notice it. But it's kind of like the bus compression a little bit if you if you want that, but I think it's a bit more um a bit natural. It can be quite tedious to put in, but if you just um apply it, it can it can really uh just give that your tracks that overall sort of floaty sort of bounce. I don't always use it, but it, it, for these type of tracks I do. So that's 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 a good tip. And then, do you want to go through each one of the buses? I mean, we've done it independently. Yeah, but... okay, so the drum bus. Uh, I don't know if I went on here, but I think I did. Right, okay. Multiband compression, and again, L2. Um, again, I'm sort of taking the volumes down again. Bass bus, we went through that. It's got it's quite a lot on synths. Again, let's see, so it might be band compression. Do you want to go through the usage of the multiband compression and like how you prefer to use it? I literally, I use a lot of the presets on here, I'll literally just go through and see what sounds good. I mean, I'm not, um, you know, an expert using this plugin. Um, it's quite new to me, but uh, it seems to sweeten things up um, and makes things a little bit more cohesive. I mean, I think that's a tough one. I mean, you don't need to be overly technical a lot of time, but it sounds good. And... No, it's true, it's definitely. Yeah. Um, again, the pad, I didn't have much on, and that's probably a reason I didn't have too many of the pad side chains. Um, I think if you want more room and uh, atmosphere in your mix, try not to side chain the pads too much. Um, so it'll give you a bit more air. And obviously because I've sort of just you know, doing the volume automation on the master bus going up and down, it probably just gives it that bit of floatiness anyway, so you don't want to go go over. Yeah. For your side chaining, are you using the kick or are you using like the LFO tool? It depends, like sometimes I can use LFO tool, uh, the camel fat. Uh, the vengeance, um, or I can just use the kick trigger like the more, uh, traditional technique. It doesn't really matter. It depends what, it depends what you're going for. They all generally do the same thing. But well, we spoke about this yesterday <coughs> about the, the transient and the kick sculpting the overall feeling and fun. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Um, like I said, I'm probably in future tracks I might, you know, just try doing the, uh, you know, the uh, more traditional technique of side chaining. Okay, so, so so and then obviously these are my effects channels. Uh, I just have different types of delay that I can just apply. H, H delays. Uh, another H delay. They're, they're almost like presets, like that you can just kind of. Yeah, 
They're all set up. Uh, set up before this like, project tempo that everything's in place. So when I start work, I've already got on there and I don't have to, you know, different types of reverbs, like a room reverb, plates, large reverb and a large reverb side chain. Um, I'm boys, delay I use a lot, so cool delay. Really good delay, yep. And uh, bio, bio delay, which yeah. Which is not one you hear this often. No, this is a really good delay, um, really That's, good. It's, actually, it's quite old, it's a free plugin. If you just type a, on um, bionic delay, you're actually giving me a bit of a. As, yeah, as a, it's based on a logic delay. It's, it's cool uh, for the, the sort of fluttery tape sort of sound. Um, okay, what else? So let me just. Should we go get, over the melodies as well? And the chords? Yeah, I want to go over the, the master um, output because I know a lot of people talk about that. So just to sort of play here. <laughs> Important thing, right? I hardly, if you look at my master output, stereo out. Can, can you bring the mixer onto this? No, don't, don't, you just use this. Right, okay. Um, I've just pulled down the master a little bit. Um, literally, I have nothing on um, on my master master out, stereo out. Um, sometimes I do, I might have a limiter on it, um, but before mastering, I don't. Um, if I've mastered my own stuff, I might, but you, you don't need it at all, I think. If um, you can get a, a mix sounding good uh, without having anything on, then um, it's even better. So would you always leave the master and the master and you? That's just, that's just you know, uh, how, I, how I work sometimes. You, you don't, if, you want, if it's going to be mastered by an engineer, um, yeah, try and get it as good as sounding as you can without anything on the um, master app. I completely agree with that. In fact, um, I do that. Because, um, you yeah, know, some people like to put a limiter on it, which sometimes I do. Um, other people like to put um, a bus compressor, which is good as well. Um, but I think it's good practice to try and get your mix sound as good as possible. With nothing on yeah. your master. Yeah. Because people like, rely on that too much, I think. Um, so that's, that's, that's a good tip as well. So there you go, nothing on it. Right, and so we should probably just go over, you know, I mean, just some of the, the sequences themselves, kind of melodies and how you're doing stuff. Yeah, sure, we, we, do you want to? Um, should we go over the, the bases are pretty simple. Ash, should we show the sequences? Uh, yeah, of course. Let's have a look. So, the main bass, which was the sub bass, was just those two seconds. Watch as Just that. Again. Pretty straightforward. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, Matt. I did just the, the same for both. No, I think I'm slightly different. Okay. Ah, there's a, a small change at the end as well. Yeah, it just gives it a little bit more groove and a bit more yep. sort of uh, trickery on the ears, I guess. It's just like a mid. Um, boost. I just think it adds to the rhythm a little bit more, rather than following the other sequence. Okay. It's there. It adds to the adds to the flavour. Saw bass. A harsh beat. That's like yeah. This is like the real mid range. Yeah, real mid I think that's important to have like a quite a sort of prominent mid range bass to really cut through. So you sort of play around with the notes, having on. On off. The uh, delta bass. Which is more than that's an acid. Yeah. No, it's an acid sequence. I think that I had like a. Um... Yeah. So I just used it. No, I just to create more. like uh, yeah. an effect. Bass, bass. Which is a good sound, that as well. Which is side chain, so I've just had the notes sort of. What about panning on basses? Uh, I don't really usually um, pan the sub at all. So, obviously, sub basses. Should be sent off. Yeah, absolutely, definitely. Um, yeah, this track I didn't, everything was uh, 
centered bass wise. I, th- I think for for club music, for pop music might be different, but for because it's going to be played a lot, quite heavy in the club. Um, you know, stuff like bass, you need to keep it quite central anyway. Um, and percussion, you can. But I, th- I think if you give other elements like the synths, I'm not sure if I use much panning on these. Nope, don't use much panning at all. Drums, nice, no, so very minimal panning. And there's a little pan there, but yeah. Um, I think again, all about the mix. Um, I think some of the sounds as well you know, can create that illusion of uh, being quite wide. You know, a lot of the synth sounds now, um, especially in the side of the massive, are very wide sounds, um, so you don't really need to pan them much. So, that's basically the bass sequences. And you've got the feel free as well, which I don't think we'll have had a look at. Oh, that's panned a little bit to the... It's an arpeggiator, I think. So, um, yeah. Okay. But uh, yeah, all together it, it works. And, I mean, we'll, we'll kind of wrap this video up, but if we just go over, like, the, the pads, maybe, the chords. Yeah, okay. Um, These are your, your beautiful chords, David. <laughs> Ah, uh, yo, you know what I'm like for the, the big chords. Yeah, really nice airy breakdown pairs. It's the sort of thing I like. Do you want to show us a sequence? <coughs> um, yeah. See lots of reverb on those. I like a lot of reverb on my tracks as well. That reverb I'm using, by the way, is on my... Um, uh, reverb essential packs on freshly squeezed. So. Is that one of your presets? Yeah, yeah. Ah, I forgot do which one it was, but it's on there. Ah, we do use the wrong stuff. <laughs> Another tip for when you're doing pads: make sure you lay out the um, the chords and the notes. You know, get it really thick. You know, see a lot of people. Well, that's like because I always do the four note chords. You know, with the bass. Yeah, I see a lot of people just using like one note and then like a bass note, but if you you know, really sort of uh, make the chords really rich and full, and then you get that. That's where you get that warmth from. Um, and mm-hmm. use a like a low note, and then a good other trick is to use the sub below it so to get that real I just weight. Sustained, like, sustained, uh, yeah. It's almost like that so just kind of sustained bass. Yeah, it just warms it up yeah. and makes it nice and snug and cozy. Yeah. Um, and then I'll shoot this gate. The gate is like, it's, it's really cool then, isn't it? Yeah, works well though. Um, I think it added uh, a bit of movement to the to the break breakdown. Um, because that, that's an important element when you've not got the percussion or drums. Yeah, you need something there just to sort of maintain the energy. Yeah, I mean, I, 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 quite, I, I used to, you know, love the classic breakdowns where you know it was just pads and strings. Too but that, that's my start, um, sort of taste I guess yeah, but yeah, um, yeah <laughs> like but if you use like something say like a gated synth or even like a little pluck just plucking away in the background uh, arpeggiator or something I think that's a good tip as well is that um, a lot of the time with melodies you should think of them as adding to the rhythm of the track and they are another rhythmic component especially in dance music Yeah, you know it's not just down to the percussion and the drums so let's just play this out I just want to remember I mean, build ups as well. If you want to know about build ups, again, nothing special. just a standard sort of uplifting build you know slowly introducing your percussion um, but it does work quite well yeah if you put it in with a mix okay so
show. Uh, another important thing is as well is like the writing in tracks. Like if you get the writing and the arrangement and stuff like that, that's really important. Um, you know, and it's sort of almost it does help with the actual production as well and how it sounds. I know it sounds obvious, but it's it's obvious, but not everybody kind of follows that. Though. Mm, you know yeah. what I mean? That's it. That's the kind of thing. Um, I think this has went through pretty much everything, isn't it? Yeah, um, I'm quite happy with that video. So hopefully the group. I mean, if you've got any questions, uh, just reply to the video in the group or on the Facebook page, and we'll um, we'll maybe even be able to do like a small follow-up videos just to go over specific techniques or to answer any questions. Uh, but I hope we hope you enjoyed the video anyway. And uh, like I say, just leave any feedback in the comments. All right, bye. Sounds good.